Mizracta. <laughs> I want you to say, that gets my goat. That gets my goat. Say it mad. Hmm. That gets my goat. Yeah, my goat get my goat. Oh, I didn't scream as much as I wanted to. <laughs> and I did also say F you up the A instead of what I wanted to say. But, uh, you know, with, with Daredevil, okay, you get an origin story, uh-huh. which is perfectly cromulent. You get him <laughs> fighting Bullseye, which is perfectly cromulent. You have him kill Bullseye, which I wouldn't have you do. You have Bullseye resurrected at the end, which I wouldn't have you do. You have the love interest. You got Electra Nachko. So you, oh, cool. You have Electra's killed, well, which is kind of a shame, too. But you also have Kingpin. And you not only have Kingpin as a, a tertiary villain, you have Daredevil face off against Kingpin and not only win, but break his legs. Wow, d- d- dude. There is nowhere else to go. I, <laughs> right? that, that was three movies worth, and you exhausted it all, all of which was in a non-satisfying way. And it just, yeah, the, what a bummer, man. Uh-huh. Anyhow, uh, I I was just going to say that. Okay, so what we were saying is... Oh, yeah, I was going to say uh, it made like $52 million, I think, for its opening weekend, which that was even less than X-Men, which actually is doing okay. I think X-Men is up to like 125 or so by now. I was just looking at it today. Did you know Pirates of the Caribbean is at like 225? I, I didn't that know that. surprise you at all? I thought uh, when we spoke before about Pirates of the Caribbean, it hadn't done well. Well, it hadn't done what the other three did. Hmm. Uh, yeah, X Men has held on, but it's still not even going to to make what Wolverine made. Uh, and Wolverine made like one sixty nine or something like that. Its whole run and is considered a huge disappointment. And the good thing about that is the movie was considered a good movie, and so I think you may get a sequel, anyways. Well, Wolverine too. That looks like it's still going to happen. But a thing with the, with Green Lantern is as damning in my mind as that Sinestro crap was at the very, very end. The, the thing that damns it is its budget. And we've yeah, what got was a... its budget? They haven't said. It, it's over <laughs> two. Uh-huh. Over $200 million to make this movie, plus 140 to market it. Uh, reportedly, over 100, 140. 140. But you can't bounce back from that. 50 is a great opening for... A regular film. A regular movie. For for Kick-Ass, 50 would be awesome. For Super 8, 50 right. is pretty good. But for a movie where it had to have made 300 just to break even domestically, they're screwed. And not only are they not going to pursue other Green Lantern films, but Warner Brothers is going to say, oh, see, we, we tried a non-Superman Batman movie, and look what it got us. Not, never again. Never again. Never again. Never again. And it's a shame. You know, I, I don't love DC as much as other people do, but I'd love to see a Wonder Woman movie. Mm-hmm. I'd like to see their other stuff get made. I would go see a Flash movie, even though I don't really know who the Flash is. Uh, I'd go see one about the Archer guy. I would go see... Hawkman? Ha- I don't know about <laughs> Hawkman. But, but again, if somebody loves Hawkman enough... They can make a really good movie about Hawkman, one of right. those where you go, I, I cared. I cared when he raised that big mace thing up. I was just like, oh. And, and you know, the same thing with Thor. I didn't give Cowboy's backside about Thor. And it was a good movie. And I will go see Thor too, Because Branna really cared about Thor and the other people that made that movie. Is it possible that Thor was the other origin story or the other arc that they were comparing it to? I don't think so, but it is possible because that one is kind of similar. He has the egos from being a jerk to being a good guy by the end. I don't know. It was just a lot more satisfying. Yeah, Thor's it was. was. And I, I, I don't know, but I would guess that Thor was cheaper too. It had a lot of space stuff. It had a lot of aliens and things like that, but it just didn't. Not every movie has to compete with Transformers or something like that. And Green Lantern was never going to be a, a mega blockbuster. You know what I mean? Right. To pump that much money into it, I think they're setting themselves up to fail. Only one or two movies in a summer can make $300 million. Yeah. And one of them is going to be put out by Pixar. I don't know how how whoever it was that justified this budget justified it. Uh, recently, there was a, a horror film that Universal was going to make called At the Mountains of Madness that Guillermo del Toro has been trying to make 
for like 15 years. And nobody would ever support him on that. And so he buddied up with James Cameron and said, would you produce this? And Cameron said, sure. And so Universal had a go and they were going to make it. And then finally the money guys got a hold of it, the, the, the bean counters. And they said, we can't justify $200 million on a movie that's going to be R-rated. It's too much of a gamble, even with James Cameron's name on it. And they just killed it. They're just like, sorry, done. Mm-hmm. They didn't say bring it back for 150, they bring it back for 100. They just said no. And so they all went their separate ways. And, and I know that really broke Del Toro's heart because, you know, he's been making all these studio films so that he could get the cachet to say, okay, now I want to make my movie. And yet he has been making his movies. He'll make a Spanish language one here or there or something like that mm-hmm. um, in between Hellboys and things like that. But who, where was the executive that said, yeah, oh, okay, that, that's fine. We'll spend Dark Knight or Superman Returns money on Green Lantern. <sighs> it's funny that I wouldn't be surprised if somebody came to him and said, yeah, we want to do this movie. We figure probably, I don't know, 70, 100 million it'll cost us. And they're like, 70, 100? No, you need to do more. If you're doing a superhero movie. You got to spend at least 200 million on it or else nobody's going to care. You need extra explosions and lots more CG suits and stuff. I wouldn't be surprised if that's the th- the thought process they have these days, where they're just like, what? You're not going to go way, way, way over the top? Why even bother then? I can't understand that. I-, I don't think I'm a stupid person, but I can't understand that. They'll say, you know, it's easier to get a $200 million movie made in Hollywood than a $50 million movie. Hmm. And I'm like, yeah, all right, say that again. Man, you got to recheck your math. But apparently it's true. And if they think it can be a tent pole or something like that, right. they'll, they're willing to dump tons of eggs in this one basket. You know, I don't get that. Like Woody Allen has a movie out right now that costs dick. Really? Apparently, I, I, I saw the budget. It wasn't even a bag? Just one? <laughs> it was just one rather hefty. Oh, okay. <laughs> it was at least a porn star size one, right? It's called Midnight in Paris, I believe. Yeah, I think so. And it's going to play all summer long. It's his biggest hit in 20-something years. Yeah, it's got, uh, like I said, I was on Rotten Tomatoes today. That's got really, it's like in the 90s, like 92 or 3 or something like that for that one. And a movie like Bridesmaids, a huge, huge hit. But How much did it cost? Nothing. Probably a Probably a vagina, actually. I, I, I know that's what you're asking. It didn't cost dick. <laughs> it's just, you'd be like, wow, okay, uh, Bridesmaids grosses plus Midnight in Paris grosses plus Super 8 or whatever was equal to what Fast and the Furious 5 made. Wow. You know, I was like, look at that. That's so cool. Uh, today, Universal announced release date for Fast and the Furious 6. I, I don't care because I'm not going to go see any of those. Mm-hmm. But if it means that two or three smaller movies aren't going to get made so that they can dump all of their eggs in this one basket, I, that just that breaks my heart. I, I, I don't know what to say on that. And yeah, James Cameron is always talking about these other movies he wants to make. But no, he's going to do Avatar 2 and then Avatar 3 next. And each one of those are going to cost... A gazillion. Uh, so, so, so much money, which is fine. I mean, he's proven that he will make it all back for whoever spends that money. But it's a shame. It would be just so great if next year we saw a $30 million James Cameron movie. And he's like, yeah, don't, don't worry, don't worry. We'll put an Avatar trailer at the beginning of it. But first I wanted to make this. Like J.J. Abrams making Super 8, that that one, frankly, was probably too expensive because <laughs> you got a 15-minute <laughs> train crash scene in the middle of the movie, which costs three-fourths of your budget. Mm-hmm. Oh, dude, that train crash <laughs> is so over the top. <laughs> I mean, seriously, it's something that would happen in a Transformers movie oh. where cars are going shooting 200 feet into the air and flapping around and the crash and exploding for a billion pieces in all directions, taking out a square mile with each one and raining down destruction like asteroids normally do in Michael Bay movies. <laughs> nice. But 
you care about the people that are dodging those things. Right. And so it's infinitely more effective than an asteroid hitting in a Michael Bay movie. Anyway, I, I just it's something that I'll never understand. And, and we've talked about it many, many times. I, I guess I'm I'm not cut out to be, be in Los Angeles exec. and be in rooms with these people because I I, I don't know. I I, yeah. I, I I don't have what it takes. Yeah, we were we were in film school with a few folks like that, but uh we weren't those folks. I wasn't, and it's a shame. I, I, I feel like I have something to offer and I would like to go out and, and tell stories and that, but it's, it, it, let me just diverge here. One of the first things they taught us in film school, and oh, I fought against it from the moment they introduced it. You know, it was just like, like whenever you're seeing some instructional thing and you say, oh, well, th- this doesn't apply to me. <laughs> they, they, the, one of the first things they taught us was schmoozing. Uh-huh. And the importance of schmoozing. And there was actually a class where you had to get up in front of the class and schmooze with another person or with the teacher. And schmoozing, in case you speak English, means <laughs> making small talk with somebody, finding out something that they're interested in and pretending that you're interested in it so that they will like you, so that they will remember you and forge some kind of phony friendship. Yeah. Now, you may have a schmoozing better is, definition. It's basically brown nosing. Oh, okay. There you go. That's what it is. It's ass kissing. Yeah. But the Yiddish for ass kiss. And I, I was just like, what, what? You're joking. You know, I expected the, the other shoe to fall and for the instructor to say, okay, I, I, I was having a little fun with y'all. But it wasn't. It was an important part. It was a big skill you had to learn. And it is true. It's not what you know, and it's not what talents you have that gets you somewhere in Hollywood. It's who you know and who you can call. And it was a lesson that I guess I should have let sink in better or a talent that I wish that I had. I'm not good at that whole pretending that I like something that I don't or pretending that I agree with something that I don't because it's politically advantageous. Right. And that's a shame, but it's also a skill that may, maybe it's not just Hollywood. Maybe you need that in an office environment. Maybe you need that in a neighborhood environment, a social environment. Maybe right. you need it with in-laws. Uh, and so it's important, but I just, oh, it, it's, it's, it's hard for me to uh, be force-fed crap and pretend that it's filet mignon. And that's something that maybe everybody needs to learn to do if they want to succeed in life i i don't know because afterward you can be a a a james cameron or a stanley kubrick and be like you know what that's crap it's not even crap it's monkey crap the really wet kind you dare call this filet mignon eat it and uh if you have any poo fling it now (laughs) the best line from that uh, madagascar movie right there (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I was not aware that there was such a thing. But okay, I will give you that. Oh, do you think we ought to stop right now? Yeah, that's probably a good idea. I think we're droning on and on and on and on and on and on. And on, and on okay, well, on I'll tell you what. Next week, let's go like completely out of control, off topic, and just talk and talk and talk until we forget that we were ever talking about Green Lantern. <laughs> You know, that might actually be a, a therapeutic thing. Maybe we should do that. All right. Talk until we forget about our Green Lantern. Until then, I'm Rajafi. <laughs> and I'm Big Anklovich. See Good you later, folks. That really pisses me off, or that gets my goat, or whatever this is ultimately called, is produced under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives license. Very sad. One twenty-one. Do we need to do any more? That's enough, right? Yes, it's enough.